just wanted y'all to see my butter or my pup butter he's such a good boy he's out here being a little fisherman a little fisher pup he'll see a fish and he gets all excited Look. I was reading the Bible and all of a sudden I heard a bunch of ruckus and I looked up and he done found him a fish and he was staying on top of that fish pretty good he was chasing that thing all around he was acting like a fish himself he was so cute he gets so excited with them ears that tail just a wagon he's so happy all you gotta do is bring him down to the creek and he's a happy pup now he's a pretty happy pup but you normally don't see them ears staying up that long like that i mean he's really like stoked you know <laughs> i love it absolutely it makes me happy such a sash y'all see this beautiful creek this is leather wood i've showed y'all a little bit of leather wood here and there i can go down through here and show you a little more just because i'm doing this ain't it beautiful absolutely just gorgeous praise you wish jesus i enjoy this place i don't like all the writing on the bridge over here but you know it is what it is i wonder if i can zoom in let y'all see underneath that bridge there see that gorgeous little spot a little nook back here oh it's beautiful oh 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 we don't found him one oh we missed it we missed it he gets so excited I know some of y'all gonna be all right with this. Y'all are animal lovers. You've asked me to do this before and I ain't never done it. I'm not too big on taking pictures and, you know, doing videos of my life. Oh, look, you done found one. <laughs> he gets so excited. He starts bouncing. Butter. He's so cute. Oh, man, we're supposed to, he entertains himself, you know, but he does the whole loner thing, too, and I don't want to be like a loner, you know, I want people around and community, and that's what we're supposed to be, we're supposed to be one body, I'm not supposed to be loners, I'm saying that for myself, you know, saying it for myself. Because I know the enemy wants us to, to think that we want to be loners and just, just you know, and, and some stuff don't matter. I'm trying to make it act, act as though it's bigger than what it is. And some stuff just don't matter. It's like, right now, you know, like, I had a, I found out I had a driver's license, but I knew my license is, I mean, like, it, it, it's been suspended for a long time, okay, and, and so, like, all of a sudden, I have a, a, I was supposed to go get a picture ID a few years ago, and it ended up, they gave me a driver's license, it says DL on it, so I find, I find out, you know, hey, I got a driver's license, and, and so, I get this truck fixed, and, and I, I, I'm driving, and, and then the truck, <laughs> Oh my goodness. So one thing after another. The truck's great. I mean, it's a trooper, but it's just one thing after another. Things have happened, you know, with the tires and, and, and whatnot. And, and so, anyway, I digress. The point is, is so I got this license, and, and then uh, we, we had this thing happen recently, and um, I found out that my license was suspended. And I'm like, oh, so now, you know, I'm driving on a suspended license. I have no license. It's suspended. And I don't have any tags on my truck, which I've been driving without tags on my truck ever since the truck got fixed. You know, uh, 
I ain't been in trouble with my truck with the tags, not having tags, and driving without a license. I ain't got no, I ain't got called or nothing driving without a license. But uh, it's the fact of like, here I am again, you know. I feel like I had a little bit of freedom. You know, like, before I found out my license was suspended, um, I, I had a little bit of freedom. I could just jump in my truck and, and go down the road, and I'll be well. You know, it's my vehicle. I, I'm able to go. And, and now, I don't feel like that. I don't feel like I have that freedom. And it's nobody that's around me that's causing me to feel this way, man. They're... Dad and Jason have been absolutely wonderful, you know, in, in so many ways. They're nothing like what I'm used to dealing with. Um, they're letting things just, you know, be. They're letting me make my own choices, my own decisions on things. And and not really getting, like, or angry at me and turning away from me and not speaking to me for four days. Because I've done something that... that yeah, wrong in their eyes. Um, they've been really awesome. And so it's not them, it's me. It's me, it's the way I'm feeling. You know, it's just, it's it's the feeling of, of being stuck. <laughs> it's the feeling of being stuck and it's nothing that anyone's doing. I've just been in that house, you know. I've been in that house, Opie and I were, you know, Opie was really depressed and I was getting that way. And I've been in that house for, for six years now without really even leaving. Not going to other people's houses and really visiting them. You know, not, not going anywhere. If I went anywhere to do anything that was, you know, uh, fun or just to leave the house to go to the grocery store or anything, I would either walk or, or I'd, I'd have to wait for Opie, you know. And, and that was always such a battle because he basically lived in the truck when he worked. And, and so the thing is, is like, I get a vehicle, now I'm able to leave this house anytime I want to. And I can't at this moment. I can't just leave the house anytime I want to. I can't just like, you know, feel that I can. This, this feeling of being stuck. Of being stuck and yeah I probably do run from that house I mean Opie died in it there's a lot of memories there <laughs> Jason's awesome he's been cleaning that house out you know getting all kinds of stuff out and I'm just letting him do it I'm ex I, I, and in some of this stuff it's, it's unbelievable how hard it is to accept some stuff being gone it is I'm just stunned in myself, you know, that some of this stuff that's here, that, that it's at my house, I, I'm having a hard time letting go of. I don't understand it. Because it's things, it's stuff, it's materialism. And the only thing I can think, you know, the only thing that, that I can think of is because of the memories of Opie and I. You know, together we were we were in that house for six years together, in that house, and with all that stuff we collected together, and and with it being moved and gone, gone, you know, pretty much, whew, all kinds of stuff been being thrown away. With it being gone, it's like, you know, more of Opie being gone. But I think that's just a lie of Satan trying to have me hold on to this stuff, because this stuff. Is just collecting dust, and and it's and and it's possible that it's causing me to even have um, oppressive thoughts, uh, just because of the of what it is. Maybe the constant uh, same environment, you know, the way the things are placed and whatnot. If stuff's all all placed in the same place for six years, it's not really moved then it's very possible that, that that's why I'm feeling oppressed is because I, I've looked at the same stuff the same way and had, you know, um, hard times, trial and tribulation with this stuff around being in the same place.
not moving. Ah, oh, this is just stuff that I, I, I this is just uh, thoughts I've been having and um, don't even know why I'm doing it on YouTube. Probably somebody else needs to hear it too. At least y'all get to watch my pup walk around looking around for um, fish. He's a natural fisherman, I'm telling you. Fisher pup. The acceptance of things being gone. That's a hardcore one. I'm really surprised. You know, I was in 17 foster homes in four years. I was bounced all over the state of Tennessee. And being that I was in 17 foster homes in four years, I, I, I every foster home <laughs> was different because, uh, or every time I moved, I would leave stuff, you know, because they would be the ones that would pack my things, all my, my items and stuff and send me on to the next house and then they would someone would pick my things up from the office and, and bring it to me and so i never really got to pack my own stuff and i'd lose i'd lose valuable items that i thought were valuable pictures you know clothes blankets whatever it may be i, I would lose stuff through all that and so i didn't have that attachment to materialism I, and I, oh man, when I got older, I went to jail and in the, in the institutions um, so much that that I would just you know you go into jail and institutions. By the time you get out, you done lost a few things because somebody done been to your house or you done lost your whole house or or um, all your things got kicked out of the house you were in. Uh, whatever it may be, you just lose things. And so I've never I didn't have that attachment to stuff. But then Opie and I get together, and and we we were together for for almost ten years, and we have all this stuff that we've collected. And I'm telling you, you know, we lived in Memphis. <laughs> we missed that one. We lived in Memphis, and and um, we collected things there. Well, when we moved from Memphis here to to uh, Dixon, then um, we put some of that stuff in storage because we were living with somebody. So we had one storage building. Well, then we lived from that house to another house into our own place. But we had stuff we collected there, so we put that stuff in a storage building. Well, either way. So Opie and I moved five places the whole time we were together. And all five places we collected stuff. By the time we moved into this house that we're in now, Six years ago, we had three storage buildings. I'm not kidding, three. Because of all the stuff. So here we are with three storage buildings, plus all the stuff we're collecting in this house. Finally, Opie lets go of all this stuff. He's just like, I can't, I don't even know why I'm paying on this anymore. So here we are. We, we don't have any, any of this stuff anymore, but all the stuff that we've got at the house now, it's still... <laughs> It's stuff that that we, it's just more things. And being, Satan is trying to make me hold on to this stuff by using Opie as my excuse. And, and I ain't going to let that happen. So, I, you know, I, I'm saying this because of prayer. I need y'all's prayer. I know that this is a different video than what I've ever done, but um, I need y'all's prayer because uh, what's going on with me, you know, with my thoughts, the enemy's really trying to, to come against me with stuff. <laughs> And that includes license and tags and, you know, um, uh, materialism. And, and, and it's clouded my mind, you know, because this stuff don't matter. It don't. One more thing that I would need of prayer, and that would be the here lately, and this past week. And maybe that's because all the stuff is starting to go, right? This past week... I've really been, um, it's been harder on me this past week, 
Obi being gone than it has in a, in a, in a while. I'm talking like months while. Like this past week. And, uh, I really, I, I do believe it's some of the stuff being, just the stuff being gone. But one of the things that I keep thinking about, you know, I've just been so angry with him. I've been so angry with Opie leaving me with all this stuff to, to mess with and take care of and do. Outside of the house and inside, all this trash and scrap metal outside and all the junk on the inside. And, and and so and it was me too. I'm not saying it was just them. It was me too. I helped collect this junk. Okay. But you know, <laughs> he was getting so much better. And this is what I keep thinking. This is what what's been going on this past week. He was getting so much better about his thoughts. And, and he wasn't waking up and complaining, you know, uh, and, and he was, he was happy. He was starting to become more happy with his movements and his, and his words that were coming out of his mouth. And I think that's what's been bothering me so much because I've been so angry with him for a long time, not just before he died. I've been angry with him for a long time because of how he had become just not helping me and not doing and but 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 I was but he wasn't helping me and doing even with him not doing that he was still with his thoughts and the words that were coming out of his mouth he he was changing Jesus, Yeshua, Yahusha was changing him. And that's what's been bothering me so bad. Because he was like getting there, man. He was like, oh, he was so close. I could see it every day. Every day I could see the change that Jesus was doing through him. And it was happening quickly as soon as he realized as soon as Opie realized, it was like right before the coronavirus hit. It, oh, that ritual that's going on, okay? As soon, right before it hit, Opie realized what I'd been talking about. Not I, but Jesus, Yeshua, through me, Yahusha, through me, had been talking about, about music. And how Hitler, how did he get the whole world to change the sound hurts? And Hertz is the first, you know, uh, pillar for quantum computing. The sound Hertz, Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Theta, you know, uh, uh, Delta, whatever, okay? So, so, but music, we, is, we are created to worship. <laughs> we are musical instruments. We are created to worship. You go in Ecclesiastes, he talks about us being musical instruments. Um, um, uh, uh. Uh, uh, oh, I can't think where, um, there's some more where he talks about us being musical instruments. So we're musical instruments. We were made to worship, right? We were created to worship. And being that, Satan, the, the time that we live in today, this day and age, we are in the end times. Closer, we're so much further in Revelation than we could ever believe. Okay. He is, Satan is a deceiver. He is the deceiver and, and he is deceived. Okay? Everybody, people don't like it when I talk about pharmakia. Pharmakia, pharmacy, sorcery. That is what pharmakia is. Well, they own everything. They own what you put on your hair, what you put on your body, all this other stuff. So being that, being that, we, we got this spell that has been the iniquity of the fathers. This spell that has been placed on the children. But the word of God says that all nations are going to fall. It says in, in, in Daniel as well that, that the children, um, they're going to they're gonna fall. The uh, saints will fall for a short time, a short season. You know, so, so be in that, okay? Be in that. We've been in this. We've been in this. And music today is nothing like anything we've ever heard before. But not just today's music. 
You even go back to the 50s and the 40s and the 30s. You just keep, man, you go back and you realize and see that music has totally been ran by the occult. The Satanist worshipers, the, the straight up, they sacrifice, shed blood, real blood from people. They sacrifice to make these musical tones happen. And it, man, there's nothing made for our entertainment. If anyone went big, anyone, any band, if any band went big, you can guarantee your bottom dollar that they are a part of the occult ritualistic system, the Kabbalist Freemasons. You can guarantee you. Guarantee. Guarantee it. No doubt. And so, I, I don't trust. I don't listen to music. I love music. I don't even trust the Jesus music that's around nowadays. Because it's in, it's just so infiltrated with the Babylonian system. And nobody, nobody wants to see that. But Opie, Opie, months before the coronavirus hit, months, he finally stopped battling me on it and started seeing what I was saying. Not I, but Yahusha through me. He started seeing, hearing it. You know, speaking it. He was understanding. And so, and realizing nothing's made for our entertainment. The entertainment systems, the, the media, all of it, it's all ran by only six, six uh, companies um, and corporations. Dude, you know, nothing. We are infiltrated or the 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 America United States of America all over the world is infiltrated and and no oh this music of today the music of today it's it's no bueno so Opie when he when he found out what I was saying was real true then he started realizing you know, that, hey, um, life is so much more than, than what I've been working for. He was just a workhorse, he thought. Come to find out, he was more than just a spot. The words that were coming out of his mouth were powerful. He was realizing this. He was waking up to this. That the words that were coming out of his mouth were powerful. When singing and when speaking. <laughs> and that's what's been so hard. That's what's hard. It's because he was so there. And we go and, 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 and we go and we mess and, and, and we mess with some of the heaviest stuff you can get your hands on. Decided we were going to be big boys. Put our big boy pants on. And, um, yeah. It's hard. It's hard to accept that part of it. And he was so there. He was there. Yahushua Jesus has sent me my dad and Jason. My dad, my dad is so much like Opie. I'm, just, I'm, I'm stunned, absolutely stunned. <laughs> and there's so many things that I see in Dad that I know could have been Opie. And Dad's getting there, man. Dad's one of the smartest men I've ever met in my life. My daddy is. And he's truly amazing the way he, he's so good to me, to his daughter. 
I know that Opie could have been that, you know? Opie was good to me in so many ways. He made sure we didn't go without our home lights and water and home, you know, our house bills. He made sure that what we, we wanted or what we needed, we had. That's the one thing about Opie. He was a work, a worker, a hoss. And Dad and Jason, they're amazing the way they, and they're, they're so open about letting me speak about Opie. That's been what's getting me through this, is being able to talk about Opie. Because I, you know, didn't realize, I didn't realize how angry I still was at him. And now I'm getting it, you know. Been mad at myself, too. For allowing this stuff in, you know, but but Roman, I mean, uh, 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 Hebrews, Hebrews, no, Romans fourteen twenty two. Hast thou faith? Have it to God. Happy is he that condemneth not that thing. Oh, condemneth not himself in that thing that he allows. Happy is he that doesn't beat himself up because he's allowed something into his life. And I've been, that Bible verse has been ringing and ringing and ringing in my brain. Have self faith. Because I tell you, I beat myself up and I shouldn't, I shouldn't allow Satan to get up in there and, and, and let me, uh, and, and, and I let him just play on those thoughts and and condemn me because of, I let that in because I tell you if it hadn't happened my dad and I wouldn't be as close as we are now Jason wouldn't be in my life now and these two these two have brought so much joy to my dog to me to my cat he have brought so much joy. So it's like I see that and it helps me to heal from this brokenness of losing OB. Thank y'all for listening to me. I really appreciate y'all. I really appreciate y'all. This is what's been going on in my mind and uh, y'all just pray for me and I know you will. Y'all are prayer warriors, man. Faithful, faithful folks on here. That's for sure. Y'all have a blessed day in the name of Yahusha. Thanks so much for listening.